November monthly meeting will commence for the Lake Forest Parks and Recreation Commission. Call to order, roll call. Uh, we have one member absent, although we may have Loretta join us at a later time. We do have quorum. All present and accounted for. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance would be led by myself. If you would follow me, please. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get into the public comment section, I want to go over some guidelines that will help you during your public comment. For those who have not done public comment before, some of you are probably aware of the guidelines. That when you address the commission, uh, these will be a non-agenda items. Uh, if you have something on the agenda that you want to comment, I encourage you to, to wait until that agenda item comes up and you're most welcome to comment at that time. Any person within, um, to, to any person can address the commission whether or not it appears on the agenda or not. A request to speak, you complete a form, which many of you have done so already, and that's available uh, on the table and to hand those in to the administrative uh, secretary. Any person wishing to address the agenda is asked to uh, hear by the decorum of the commission, speak directly into the microphone, introduce yourself and your place of residence. We ask if you would maintain the discipline and within three minutes, you will notice there's a, a green light at the podium and uh, you have three minutes from that point of the green light. When you have 30 seconds left, the light will turn to yellow, so please take note of that. So we try not to cut people off when it's three minutes have gone by. However, uh, please be aware that you have 30 seconds remaining, and then you will hear a buzzer. If you have much more to say than three minutes, you're welcome to come back to the next commission meeting and continue your comments. We want everyone to have a chance to present to the commission. Your input is very important. Please keep in mind that we're not permitted to address the comments or have a question and answer period. Our position is to listen attentively to your input because we want to know what you're thinking and offer any suggestions that is constructive. Please refrain from any applause or outbursts since we want to maintain the decorum of, of the commission. Uh, if you, if many times we have asked for additional time, we're not uh, in a position to give additional time above the three minutes, so please adhere to the three minute rule. Do we have anyone for public comment? Okay, first on the agenda is um, Josh Peters followed by Joyce Hudson. Hello. Oh. Hello. My name is Josh Peters and I'm in the current City of Lake Forest Act president. I'm here today to update the commission on the successful few drive the act put on during the months of October and November. With collection bins at Lake Forest Recreation Center, the skate park, and here at City Hall, we collected over 219 cans 
that totaled 4,000 ounces and 98 boxed and bagged items. We donated the items to South County Outreach for families in need during the holidays. This food drive was successful, and we look forward to holding more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, real quick before we do the next speaker, great job, you guys. Thank you very much. That's awesome. So thank you very much for doing that. Hello, my name is Joyce Hodson. I'm with both the uh, Lake Forest Garden Club and the Saddleback Art League. The uh, Lake Forest Garden Club is uh, interested in the Whispering Spring uh, property, and I'm here to tell you that the Saddleback Art League is always searching for a venue to sell their artwork. And so both of both these clubs would be very interested in this project. Thank you. Okay, next on the next on to speak is uh Hick 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 for Calderon, Hector Calderon, and um, followed by France Imiguan. Good evening. Um, my name is Hector Calderon, and I'm here today to just uh, come in support of the Lake Forest Gardening and the community garden that's starting up over here on Whisper Hill. And as a, not a member of, actually a resident of this area, but I'm a resident of La uh, Laguna Hills, we're also trying to start a community garden in that particular area as well. So we've been uh, working together and trying to get, you know, citizens around the area as well as residents just to kind of become more aware about the community garden aspect of things and how they can get involved. And I'd like for you guys to know that there's, a, you know, there's an interest in this sort of uh, field of, agricultural and just kind of going back to your guys' roots of putting food and um, just kind of having that access to local food around as, as well. So that was just why I came today, just in support of Ken. So thanks. Thank you. Okay, next is France Imiguan. Uh, good evening. Commissioner, sir. Um, I'm, my name is Francie McGowan. I am a resident here of Lake Forest since 1987. And um, I'm speaking on behalf of um, homeowners that are interested in uh, seeing the garden park at Whispering Hills. I know there's lots of, um, uh, there seems to be a lot of other discussions about what we can do in that area. The homeowners are have been for many years and are still looking forward to a garden park. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next is David Creep, Creep and um, followed by Kenton Betcher. And I'm a, um, the, the microphone to your right. Yeah, there was the other one. Yeah. Okay. I'm a um, homeowner in the Whispering Hills community. Been there for 23 years. And um, the people in the community that, that borders the, the piece of land on three sides, across the street, in back of it, and on the side of it, they overwhelmingly want the garden park. And I overwhelmingly want it. Um, I, I feel the property fits. The, the um, garden park fits the property better than a dog a dog park or definitely not a uh, soccer arena. It would be loud. It would be commercial. It would not serve as a buffer between the community and the businesses down the street. That's not what we need there. Um, anyway, the concept of the, of the garden park, you know, there's three parts to it. And the, the, the middle part is, I guess, the little plots for the, for the people that would grow things there. That's only one third of it. There's the part for the community where they grow produce, um, for the food bank and that type of thing. And I know two churches right now that want to be involved in planting and harvesting. They want to be involved in that. Then there's the educational part. 
And you just look at um, like the Great Park over there in Irvine. They're planning some educational, um, you know, items, exhibits, and all that type of stuff. That's what we envision: something quality like that, not just a little weed patch, not just a little, you know, garden that's not attended. This is supposed to be um, a high quality thing that we envision. So anyway, I'm definitely for the garden park, and um, I know the community around it on three sides is. And uh, so that's my comments. Thank you. Kenton Betcher. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening. Um, and my name is Kenton Betcher, and also the garden guy, and I live uh, in Shamrock Glen and uh, Lake Forest. And uh, I'm here tonight in public comment um, because our agenda item was moved forward and some people had it on their calendars, and so we thought we'd take the opportunity. Um, and I want to emphasize that you know uh, some of the ideas uh, I had sent through two packages, uh, one with a lengthy one about the garden park concept, which is really in the past few years one of our biggest efforts has been educational because it's something that isn't to be confused with a community garden just a standalone uh, and and there is some of the newest concept which is called community gardening which are part of HOAs and they were over uh, seen by a, a, a manager firm uh, where people actually pay to come and and learn the garden, and then the produce is sold within that community. Um, in Rancho Mission Viejo, there will be 10 of those parks. Uh, and uh, the first three are done as Sindora, which I was in the package. Uh, if you would like on anything in the package uh, to talk to the manager or uh, the manager of the Great Park uh, Food and Farm Lab, all of them have expressed an interest, and they will take you on a private tour. They will speak with you. They can uh, give you costs, they can give you water usage, and all of these things. Um, and so it really is sort of a work in progress. We think the entire site uh, is available or usable for it. Uh, and the three sections that we originally envisioned, um, an educational individual parcels where you can uh, take the education that you've learned and do your own thing, uh, and in a giving garden, there's other aspects of it, and that would be um, an agricultural history uh, section uh, because of the agricultural history of Orange County. Um, it could be, you know, boysenberries, which came out of Blaine Park, avocados, which came out of Mola Harbor Heights. It could be any oranges. You know, we were Orange County. So it, it's a, a, a process of ideas coming in, and we just want to stay with it, keep it up. Uh, in the forefront as we go through the process. Um, and uh, Mr. Wasserman was kind enough to give me a call probably a month ago that there would be workers on the site doing um, some proactive uh, work for El, the coming El Nino. And as soon as those trucks arrived, my phone lit up. <laughs> and they said, they're digging the ditch and they're doing this and that. And I said, well, Think of it this way. There's a, a ditch that comes down from the culverts all the way to the drainage um, at one end. So uh, all we need is uh, river rock and a wooden bridge over it, and we got the start. Thank so, you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Uh, we encourage you to attend the January meeting, which uh, Whispering Hills would be on the agenda. So I'm sure Kent and you will be getting out the announcement. I'm like to depend on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Does that complete the public comment phase? Okay, thank you. I will move forward on the agendas. Uh, presentations, there are no scheduled presentations at this time. On the consent calendar, minutes of the regular meeting of the Lake Forest Parks and Recreation Commission held on October 15th. Uh, having reviewed the minutes, commissioners, are there any changes or amendments at this point in time? Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor. Press your button, please. All right. 
minutes have been approved as as presented discussion action items uh, senior advisory board interviews Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the Commission is aware, we have a senior advisory board, and this is a board of five members. And primarily what they do is they provide feedback to staff on senior programming. When the new Civic Center is built that will include a senior center, they're also going to have a lot of input into the design of the senior center. Um, we recently had two vacancies. We had two terms that were expiring in November of this year, and we followed our protocol, which is to advertise uh, the vacancies, we did so on the city website, the Senior senior Scene Quarterly Newsletter, and the Leisure Times Fall Edition. And we only received two applications, and they were from the two incumbents. And for that reason, uh, after consulting with the city clerk, it wasn't really necessary to have them be interviewed. Um, they were not eager to be interviewed, actually. And so for that reason, we're just recommending that uh, they be reappointed to their, their terms. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe any action is necessary at this point. Cur that's correct. Okay. Very well. Uh, we'll move forward to the October 2015 recreational report. <laughs> Chairman and members of the Parks and Recreation Commission, I will give you the uh, report on the, the activities held in October of 2015. We'll start with Autumn Harvest Festival. It took place on Saturday, August. October 10th at Heritage Hill Historical Park. We attracted 1,900 people. We featured trick-or-treat stations, laser tags, Legends of Oz Schoolhouse, Nectar's Halloween Party, Game Booths, Costume Parade, Storytelling, and the Annual Glow Party. Uh, next, the uh, haunt at Heritage Hill, Two Nights of Fear. Took place on October, on, uh, October Friday, October 16th and Saturday, October 17th, also at Heritage Hill Historical Park. First time the event was presented uh, two consecutive nights. Uh, attracted, again, 1,900 people. Featured the Haunted Schoolhouse, Joker Sideshow, Two Scream Zones, Fortune Telling, Photo Booth, Game Booth, DJ, and the uh, son of Lon Chaney Jr. and the son of Bella Lugosi, Bella Lugosi Jr. For we did movies. Uh, uh, the Phantom of the Opera, and Dracula. Uh, so people were there to see them and ask them questions. Uh, we, we feature uh, celebrities of uh, past movie stars every year, and those were the two again. Uh, the Southern Ta California Teen Coalition meeting held at the Lake Forest Sports Park. We were honored to host the uh, uh, Teen Coalition on Tuesday, October 27th. 50 people attended from L.A. and Orange County cities to discuss team programming ideas and trends. And the meetings are held quarterly and are relevant to our team program. programming. Uh, last Friday's teen, night, teen Lounge Night, Friday, October 30th, 15 teens participated in, in monthly extended hours of the Teen <coughs> Lounge Program. Staff provided pizza party, a costume contest, candy, popcorn, and a screening of Jurassic World. Uh, other activities, the special needs dance on Hall uh, dance, the Halloween dance costume party it's held on Friday, October 23rd. Uh, the community service, hosted by the community services department, 97 participants enjoyed music provided by a DJ, seasonal refreshments, and a chance to win the prizes. The grand prize for the best costume was awarded to Jeremy Linhart, a.k.a. George Washington. Other notable costumes included uh, Big Hero 6, the Mad Hatter, and several superheroes. Five Marines from the 1st Law Enforcement Battalion at Camp Pendleton attended the dance and uh, added to the evening festivities by dancing with the special need guests. The next special needs dance will be held on Saturday. February 13, 2016. Guests will enjoy a Mardi Gras theme. Etney Skate Park of Lake Forest Annual Hollow Seed Bull Bash on Saturday, October 24th. Competitors and spectators from across Southern California converged on the skate park. Uh, there were over, over 48 competitors, with the youngest being six years old and the oldest uh, 52 years old. The event included 500 spectators with Pierre Andre Synergidis and Don Brown from Etnies in attendance as well, 
and the event generated uh, $1,383 in revenue for the evening. Uh, senior activities, the Rock Around the, the Clock 50 Sock Hop, uh, held on October 2nd, Friday, 75 seniors dressed up in their poodle skirts, rolled up jeans, and bobby socks who enjoyed a 50 sock hop uh, senior dinner dance. The event featured door prizes, games, dancing, and dinner. And Mar once again, the Marines from the 1st Law Enforcement Battalion uh, were present and danced with seniors throughout the night. And the last of the event is the Senior Scene Clubhouse Halloween Fun, Thursday, October 29th. The Senior Scene Clubhouse was filled with fun, laughter, games, and magic. The morning started off with seniors dressed up for Halloween. They came as witches, superheroes, monsters, and much more. Uh, uh, during all the fun, our own senior resident conducted magic tricks with playing cards. <laughs> Afterwards, lunch was served, which included white chili with cornbread, muffins, and ice cream for dessert. It was a fun time for everybody. And that concludes my recreational report. Comments? No. All right. Very good report. Thank you so much. I, I would also like to announce to the commission at this time that uh, I will be uh, retiring on December 3rd. I, I thank each and every one of you for the relationship that I've enjoyed since December 1999, which, by the way, the item on the, the agenda that night was the sports park. <laughs> Are, are you saying December 3rd of this year? Yes. Wow. So I, I, Happy birthday, so good. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Wow. Okay. It, the it, 99 thing smacks of the 16 years that it took. Yeah. Rode that horse with you, Rob. <clears throat> uh, director's report? I don't believe there's anything scheduled. I don't have a report this evening. Okay. Thank you. Well, this, uh, so we're moving right into the last part of our agenda uh, on commission comments. Uh, the commission will comment of a topic of their choosing, uh, either brief announcements, res uh, uh, a summary of activities involved, or other comments that will be appropriate. Uh, we'll start with my right with Commissioner Rosenberg. Okay, thank you. Um, let's start a, a re- a re thank you to staff. Um, something that happened before our last meeting, but that was the Harvest Festival of the Haunt. Both excellent, and uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that some of the kudos that come from members of the commission do trickle down to you know staff. I personally try to occasionally get an email out to them and that, but um, <coughs> both were really, really well done this year. Um, the choice of the uh, actors, um, descendants, if we can call it that, was especially appropriate uh, with the genre that they had, uh, their fathers had performed in. Um, you know, they were very friendly and open and that. Um, a, a little item, uh, the addition of the uh, three older purses that were displayed there, um, that Two of them were actually open, and uh, they were unlocked, which I spotted, and my wife restrained me from getting <laughs> in them. So, um, but like she says, I'm a four-year-old in a man's body. But uh, again, two excellent events, and, and people were really, you could tell they were into it, they enjoyed it. Um, the addition of the Jurassic Park to anything draws a tremendous amount of attention. So um, even though it's not really Halloween and we have dino days, was a really, really good, two good events. Uh, our special needs dance on the 23rd of, of last month, again, very, very well done. Um, my hope is this grows more and becomes, uh, you know, a, a staple in our schedule that we will have the ability to, as we move into the next year and, and budgeting, which is something then I will kind of try to address a couple of different things uh, that we can somehow find a way to, you know, allocate more money there. Everything, everything is it's not I mean, a secret to anybody. It's a function of what kind of funding is available. You have X amount, you can do X amount. But this is, a, again, a very, very good type of program, just like our senior program is. And I think the same thing applies to, to that. 
but the people really enjoyed themselves. Uh, the costumes that they had, uh, the, the people who participated, special needs people, uh, were phenomenal. I mean, it was, you kind of look at it, and, and having dealt with that group and, and other aspects of many sports for years, you almost don't expect it. And then they come, and it's like, you know, it's just as meaningful to them as to any of us. So uh, I think it's a great thing. The theme party Mardi Gras, I think, would be another thing that they can kind of dress up for. And, you know, hopefully we can do some, some other things to make it even nicer for them. Uh, the uh, senior senior luncheons, the, uh, the themes are really paying off. The Halloween uh, event, the, the lunch uh, right before Halloween, um, totally amazed at the number of seniors that dressed up. If nothing else, with the t-shirt, with the pumpkin on it, or a skeleton or something scary, uh, that they, you know, it, it, people are into it, and they, they like it, and it's fun, and um, Brenda roped me into uh, judging the pumpkin creation contest, which was a lot of other people. The different tables were, you know, I was looking for hopefully a money-making opportunity, but it didn't transpire, you know. They were all very much into competing, and um, you know it keeps them very, very young at heart, which is again cool. Uh, the uh, event again well attended with the theme, just like today. Today's senior Thanksgiving lunch room was packed. Um, Victor and his wife were there too, as was Loretta. And uh, of course, being the four-year-old, I consented willingly to participate in the quote cool pie eating contest. And I'm waiting to see the pictures of an entire face covered in whipped cream. But the people were having a, just a great time. And I, I think uh, if we could just keep remembering that, and that's uh, something to a lot of these folks that are maybe shut in, or um, this is a, a very, very meaningful thing to them. And uh, the more, again, that can be done, hopefully, you know, the better, uh, the better it goes. Um, the skate park uh, last weekend I went over to the I can't remember the name but it was a tournament by different age brackets and uh, again that's that's a, another area of our recreation programs uh, that really really shines and I think we should be very proud of um, they had a good number of people they're all having a great time again and a lot of camaraderie being built uh, the event was very well run I spent a uh, probably about 45 minutes talking with, and I can't remember his last name, Scott, who, not Scott Stewart, um, who is a real interesting add to the crew, and he's very, very good as well. And, you know, I, I think, again, when you have the, the staff that is really into what they're doing, they like what they're doing, they're actively involved. It's more than just a job. Uh, it really uh, transpires. And they take great pride in the fact that it's a world-class facility. I mean, they they don't mind telling you about it, which is you know, which is a, a really good thing. But again, it was a, a fun event, a nice event, uh, very light. And um, they were telling me they had kids from all over that had entered it, and that they kind of uh, you know expected. Um, what else? What else? Real quick. Uh, the mayor and I attended uh, on November eighth the Marine Corps birthday ball, which was at Pala Casino. Real nice event, fun event. Um, I even wound up, confess, smoking a cigar, which is traditional, uh, at that event with about 10 of the officers um, sitting out on the patio where you could do that. But uh, very well put on. Uh, they are really, really appreciative of the interrelationship developing with Lake Forest. Uh, as was demonstrated, um, they were responsive on about a 10 12 day, I'll be honest, 12 day notice from somebody from the La Madera Elementary School had reached out to, uh, for their fall carnival and she had been to the parade on the 4th with her son and husband and they'd seen the Marines during the meet and greet and could we get some, no 12 days is not a long time but they made it happen they brought three teams of dogs up and uh, non-lethal weapons and they probably had at each of the three demonstrations of the dogs that they did they probably had 200 people at each one that came over to that. Plus, they had all the the non-lethal demonstrations, and the kids could hit the riot shields. And uh, again, now the school is like, when can we get them back? You know, so 
a um, good relationship with the community and some of these people are looking to honestly from some conversations to make Lake Forest a home when the Marine Corps stint is or may end so, uh, last but not least kind of on, on these kind of comments attended the again the senior advisory board meeting um, and it's a good group it's a good group and I was I was interested without asking in the comments of the reappointment of the two members which there is nothing wrong with but I got kind of a interesting feeler up my spine Scott when you mentioned that uh, quoting unquoting they were not eager to be interviewed or whatever um, which is that's kind of a two-way street when you look at it one being uh, and, and again last time if I remember I think we had ten applicants that people are so satisfied that they don't want to change anything or that there is a somewhat of a loss of interest in in doing that um, what I find interesting having gone to uh, probably of the six meetings I think four of them I was able to attend that you have a, a division within there of very dynamic and I'll call it not so dynamic and there is a correlation with uh, you know some of the things that we see who and who bring forward ideas and uh, who are other ones who are just more kind of there type of thing and I think um, the senior dances I've noticed the uh, which are excellent by the way the enrollment or registration form has gone down the last two uh, they used to have the room pretty much packed the one before this last one I think the attendance was like 90 as opposed to the typical 120 and this one was 75 so um, you know question is always oh, is, is that a trend uh, I don't think we need to change what we're doing I think it's very well accepted and the staff just just an outstanding excellent job but you know it may be time to bring kind of the paddles out and kind of give it a charge collectively we can all kind of look into you know maybe do they want something different are they uh, you know so used to what's happening that you know my senior program is Thursday it's bingo uh, lunch, you know, etc., and some of the other stuff, they really don't have. I won't say the enthusiasm, but they they're just not as uh, participatory and active as they used to be. And I don't think it's all because of aging out or you know or, or something like that. But there's something to look at. Um, a a brief comment about something we're going to do next month, and I've kind of given that a lot of thought. And that is this report, the commission report. Um, I'm going to be openly honest and I would say it to anybody I think what we need to make a priority of call it community services is more money ask for more budget if you don't ask you never get for one I'm a firm believer in that um, but we also need to obviously give reasons as to why what and identify areas and that can be an ongoing process but I still view something as the uh, Commission report I know it's gonna you know if the idea has some merit in, in staff's opinion it, it will create a little bit more work but I go back to um, the sudden eight million dollar grant for park improvements and how that was generated by a lot of good positive data being presented to the council and them looking at it and pretty much rubber stamping it. Um, uh, Loretta was here at the time also. Rob, you remember because that was, and there wasn't a lot of discussion. Different people granted, but uh, I think community services deals with things called quality of life, and that's a hard thing really to say no to if it's <coughs> if it's justified. So, um, you know, I, I would really like to see the report. And granted, it's a seven-minute presentation but what's important is what is in that report the highlights can be presented but then the other data that in part of the executive summary would be to encourage the council to look at the and the city manager obviously to the 
at the other data that is in there that does point to things that we're doing and we're doing well, but that there are limitations because of you have so much money to work with, and that's for a year's period, and then you kind of rebid it. So um, hopefully, I'm not asking for you know for the moon, but I, I think that could be a tool, and I think with some of the current climate that exists, uh, that may be a good tool, is to give them reasons that are factual, not emotional necessarily, or that they feel they have to make a decision uh, without you know, a good basis of fact to encourage them to make that decision. So um, I'm sure we'll discuss it uh, in that length more. And that concludes my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Ross? Not much. I wanted to thank Commissioner Chair for giving me an excellent tour for me and my oh, wife quite well. of the uh, Heritage Hill Historical Park, and I'm always amazed of everything I learn every time I tour one of our parks, and I'm very blessed to be part of this commission, so thank you. And that concludes my extensive comments. Commissioner Workmeister. Wow, that was a, <laughs> quite a balance there. <laughs> um, I, I, first off, um, Rob, I'm, I'm sorry to hear the news that you're retiring. I'm very happy for you at the same time. You have known Rob for good God, even before I was on the commission, I used to bug him for fields. And so Rob has been around. He's been a great asset to the city. And you will be missed here. And, and thank you for your service. It's been it's been fantastic. So We just won't let him go. That's, you know. That's, that, there, there's, so pick him up. Oh. On a completely different topic, don't take my time. Um, <laughs> uh, I heard something interesting today, and I know the garden people may not like it. Laguna Hills is looking at a garden park as well. And, and I guess... If we're going to look at a garden park, have we talked to the staff at the City of Laguna Hills? Is it, I don't know how far it's gone. It's the first time I've heard anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if there's some coordination in, in the plans. I don't know if we've talked. Do we, okay. Uh, it's something to think about. I, I think the next, that next that January meeting will be interesting um, uh, because I, I think there's going to be a lot of folks here, and, and I think we're going to have a lot of discussion. Um, but anyway, I was, I, it was interesting to hear that Laguna Hills is, is pursuing the same topic, and, and we might be able to chat with them and you know their staff and see what's going on. Um, uh, again, the, the, and I'm jumping around. The haunt was amazing. Um, they, you know, my kids were there and they had a blast. And and I don't know how the staff does it. Um, it's it's it's. It, where any of you guys, Josh? Were any of you guys out there? At the, did you guys go to the haunt this year? Okay, <laughs> the, you're honest, and I appreciate that. But um, I think the kids just have a tremendous time. It, it's it, it's so cool, and and the, the staff, please please extend to Ron. I, I poor guy, I don't know how he does it, but it was it was phenomenal again. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, you know what? I, I do want to make a comment. I I think to Jim's point, um, for the. Usually this is the toughest night of the year for me on the commission because we usually hear some great applicants on the senior advisory board who we have to pick two or three out of nine or ten. Or I mean, We had a large number last year. Ten. Yeah. And I think you're on to something, Jim, and, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if anybody does, and, and, and perhaps Vicki may have a little more insight. But for to go from 10 applicants last year who were very enthusiastic and each and every one of them would have been very good candidates, would have been very good members of the senior advisory board, to go to zero worries me a little bit. And, and I, I'm, I'm wondering, do we need to revisit term limits for board members? And that's a hard thing to discuss. I know we've, we've gone through that. But this year kind of tells me that we may need to really evaluate this. And I, I'd like to ask, I, I don't know if it's... If we can agendize it, certainly not in December or January. I think we're going to have a full agenda. But I, I think we need to look at it because something's not right in the water there. If, if we go from 10 applicants to zero applicants in a year, I'm a little concerned about that. Commissioner Workmeister, if, if I can clarify, um, we, can, we can take a look at that. I think one of the primary purposes for the Senior Advisory Board was to comment on the design of the Senior Center that's going to be part of the Civic Center. And because we're just now getting ready to award a design contract for that, that process hasn't really started yet. I think, I think that they will be a little bit more engaged when, when we get there. That, 
but we can still examine it. And then the other, I wanted to clarify the comment that I made. I think that their relief in not being interviewed, I think it was a, mostly a fear of public speaking. Oh, I, I think that's I, all it was. I, I think, think so, too. A, yeah. I, I get that. But, but even that being said, as I said, every year I dread this night because there's, you have to pick, you know, and, and they're, they're all, we, we've always had excellent candidates. But for, for us not to have any candidates, when I saw that on the, you know, when I saw the, in the paperwork that was sent, I was kind of surprised. And so, um, again, I, I wouldn't mind hearing from, from some of the staff, maybe in the future, just what's going on, because I don't feel comfortable that something just doesn't feel right. And, and maybe I'm wrong, and, and that's perfectly fine, but I, I, I um, uh, Francisco, I can tell you in the past when we've had to elect these guys, they come up and they just, they're awesome. Every candidate has been very good. Last year in particular was a very difficult decision. And um, so so anyway, I won't beat a dead horse too bad, but um, I, I, I do think that maybe we could look into that and talk to some of the staff and see what's going on. Because I just, I, I, I think <clears throat> Jim may be on some, and you may be right, it may just be the, the lull before the storm as we get closer to building the senior center. But I, but, but I, I think it's, it's good for us to look into it because I think it's a great group and I think it's a great program, and, and I certainly don't want, my biggest concern last year was I felt like some of the people that didn't get elected were gonna walk away and not stay involved. And, and I just, I, I don't know if that's happened or not because they were all energetic and they were great. And so, anyway, um, I don't wanna end on a down note. I'd, I'd like to say, um, first of all, happy Thanksgiving to everybody next week, and I hope everyone enjoys the holiday. But thank you again, Carol, as always, you're awesome. Thank you. Pat. You must be dying with all these emails we're getting because I know we're getting forwarded a ton of them. So yeah. they are. Um, and um, but anyway, is that, Rob, we're going to miss you, and and, and we're going to make you come back and visit us a lot. And so, um, <coughs> but we, you know, you you know, I, I hope that you're proud of especially the sports park, and and you should be because you did a tremendous job. So thank you very much for your service. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> To build on the comments regarding you, Rob, uh, you're, you're not going to escape that easily because I have you already on my list for volunteers on a variety of things. So <laughs> even though you're, you're opening one door, the other door is not going to be closing. So be aware. <laughs> you would be called on. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Very well. A uh, few comments that I want to make. Um, uh, Commissioner Rosenberg was not entirely honest and open as far as the pie-eating contest today. I was present, and uh, I have to tell you it was quite an experience that he even volunteered to do that. But I admire his tenacity. Thank you. Uh, we, The seniors are such a great group, high energy level. Uh, I am a senior. How do you define a senior? Well, I, I think it's attitude, not necessarily age. I mean, if you look at the group today, it's a cross-section of a variety of backgrounds, not necessarily, you know, you, you, you kind of think you're passed out to pasture when you're a senior. And all no, they're very active, very and an excellent group that we have. Certainly look forward to the city hall being built. Uh, you know, that's further out. Uh, I, what, three, four years, who knows? I think we even have the land for it. It's just a matter of time. So that's an exciting thing to look forward to. Uh, both Commissioner Workmeister and I were, were appointed at the same time. We're going into our fourth year. It's been very exciting up the past three years, and we're looking forward to serve continually in our fourth year and hopefully to be reappointed for another four-year term. Uh, Heritage Hill Historical Park is one of those assets that every city would just die for to have something like that. And we were fortunate to have uh, a historical park, which was one of the first parks that the Orange County Park System has ever had. It was donated land. From the family that owned the land, the Whiting family, who uh, bought the land way back in the late 1800s, believe it or not, from the Serrano family originally built the adobe there. And then in the late 50s, the land was sold to the Baker family, 1958. And where I'm going with this is if you look at the foothill development, that's all part of the Baker State or Baker Ranch. 
kind of exciting what's going on out there, isn't it? Uh, you know, with the growth that we're experiencing, it puts a lot of pressure on our facilities, which is a good segue into one of my other comments that I have written down. As, as we look at the changing demographics of our population, we're bringing a lot of families, a lot of people coming in. It puts increased pressure on our community services and parks. And to take a formal review, which is always ongoing, but much more in depth in looking at the amenities of all of our parks and evaluate a couple things is, are our parks really meeting the needs? If we were to make improvements, what amenities should we improve? And how do we evaluate parks from a criteria? And I brought this up a little bit last time as far as programs, but more importantly, when it comes to parks, how do we evaluate that the park is meeting the needs of the community? What changes do we need to make to keep up with the changing demographics of our, our citizens? From a budgetary standpoint, what must we do uh, as far as better utilizing our budget funds in such a way that we can increase our effectiveness in terms of what we're doing at the park level. Because if you look at all the 27, 9, where are we, 29 parks, 30, 30, 30. parks, those parks actually came about just by accident, typically land that was either provided through the county or they just happened to be there. And it may not have all the amenities we were hoping it to have. But at the same time, I like to suggest to staff, and I'm sure this is always an ongoing thing, to do a formal evaluation review to uh, come back and report on it. Yeah, there are some things that we probably can improve on or things that we can apply for capital that would make it better. Or there may be parks that are underserving the area that perhaps we need to step back and take a look at that. Because with 29, 30 parks, I don't think, to my knowledge, unless I'm wrong, that I don't think there's ever been a formal review uh, on the amenity side. Yeah, there has been. That was what I was referring to, that report, which in its own right then yielded $8 million. But how long ago was that? Uh, Rob, how long? That was 2007. Seven. Seven. Okay. okay. Well, Seven or eight. here we are at 2016, yeah. so we'll, we'll be talking about that. I'm sure we'll be talking about that without dwelling on it. Too much. Uh, moving right along here, I, I want to remind everyone that at Heritage Hill Historical Park, corner of Serrano and Lake Forest Drive, uh, we're going to have a, a annual a Victorian Christmas event, which happens every year, which is uh, December 5th, starting at 11 o'clock. And I want to make sure it's all on your calendars because it's a, it's a fabulous event. If you haven't been before, uh, I know everyone will enjoy themselves. There. And then the following weekend, which is the 12th and 13th, is a candle walk, which starts at 4.30. And as it gets dark, all the whole park is lit up in candles. All the buildings will be open, uh, decorated, of course. The volunteers that I'm part of, uh, the docents, will be uh, stationed in each of the buildings. So please come. I think you'll enjoy the, the evening with your families. It's a, a premier event. As a matter of fact, we, we have people that come in from all over Southern California, believe it or not. It's a premier event where you see buses lined up unloading people. So uh, through the years, uh, since the park was dedicated in the late 80s, and again, that was on donated land, I might add. Uh, so when the Baker family sold the land, Occidental Land Company was a premier developer that came in and built all the homes that you see and most of Lake Forest off Lake Forest Drive, Lake Forest Two, on the associations, and that was in from 1970 to 75. And I live in one of those homes. So, so now that the Foothill Ranch is getting up and running, uh, we have a whole new dynamic up there. It's almost like, you know, an unbelievable growth area that we're experiencing. So it's kind of exciting to be part of that, from a from a commissioner. Uh, Perspective. I want to extend a happy Thanksgiving to the audience and to everybody, and a wonderful holiday season. Thank you. There's no further comments. Bang the gavel. I will adjourn the meeting.